Good morning. We want to welcome you to our worship service of Overland Park Baptist. We're glad you're here today. So let's join our voices together wherever you are and let's praise our Lord.
looked at one another what was god doing now times were hard and debts must be paid where was god so little food on their plates didn't their daddy broke his silence and the kids just listened in he said when i face a challenge and feel like giving in i go back my favorite memory to be exact it happened here in galilee when my mama woke me up and said we were going out to hear a man named jesus on a hill outside of town we listened to sermon people needed fed I handed him my lunch you know the rest so no matter how hard life may get I remember the fish Ooh, you should have seen all the fish one until I was watching the impossible and saw those baskets fill with so much food there were faces full of joy how my faith grew that day is just a boy so children learn this lesson listen to your dad Miracles will happen when you give God all you have. Then when you're weak, draw strength from that day when he met your need. And he multiplied your faith. Like when my mama woke me up and said we were going out. To hear a man named Jesus on a hill outside of town. We listened to his sermon. People needed fed. I handed him my lunch. You know the rest. So no matter how hard life may get, just remember the fear. Hello, thank you for joining us today, and I know that we're all trying to get used to this new online format, and it may take a while to continue to do that, and uh, I have noticed that no matter how much things change, there are some things that stay the same. Some of you have been joining late for church, some coming in around 11.15 or so, and uh, that's okay with this format. If you want, you can go back to the, the beginning or catch it later if you need to. Uh, there are some things I'm afraid that you might uh, miss. The thing that worries me the most when we all get back together, you're going to miss not having fast forward, mute, and pause on your remote that first Sunday morning. And uh, I know that uh, some of you may be getting used to dressing a whole new way for church. You know who you are. And hopefully you won't dress the way you did for bed the night before when you come back to church. And, uh, but it's, it's a new world that we're living in. Uh, I also want to give a shout out and a huge thank you uh, to all those who've been working on our videos, our sound, our lighting, our recording, our editing, our formatting, our uploading of videos every week. And uh, there are several people working diligently behind the scenes and giving countless volunteer hours to this endeavor. It is not an easy task. There's a lot more involved with it than I realized. And, and so Jay and Don and Mike and others have continued to give a lot of extra time to this. I really appreciate the service that you're giving to your church because you love your Lord, and I just want to say thank you. 
Uh, I'm also thankful for the blessings of technology, and uh, hopefully you've already began to turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 11 today. And uh, you know, all of this, uh, getting together this way, would have been a lot more difficult without this resource uh, to connect. And uh, so in Paul's day, they didn't have any of the scientific equipment or technology available uh, where they could connect with those that were so far away. And uh, often great distances separated Paul from the churches. And uh, so how can they minister to the spiritual well-being of others when they can't see them and when they can't physically speak to them? And how can we minister now as a church to each other and to others uh, when we're not together physically? And I think that we can play a role in the spiritual growth of others, and we can even be a source of blessing to them. You say, well, how is that possible? And uh, the answer is this amazing means of prayer. Uh, in verse number nine of this chapter that I've had you turn to, there are some words that I have highlighted and underlined by themselves. And in verse number nine, right in the middle of that verse, you see these words, do not cease to pray. And that is one thing that we can continue to do for each other, no matter what else is going on around us in our world, no matter how much distance separates us, we can continue to lift up one another in prayer. And, and we really need that. And there's a verse in this chapter, though, verse number 11, that I want us to focus on for several weeks. And it's a portion of Paul's prayer for the Colossians in this chapter. That prayer begins in verse number 9. He says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and in spiritual understanding. And so we look at that verse, and, and we realize that during these days in which we live, we really do need to be filled with spiritual wisdom and understanding and knowledge, and, and that wisdom that we need for living on a daily basis comes from God. The next verse, verse, verse number 10, it really begins to talk about that walk that we have. He says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful of every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And that's, that's more about daily living. Uh, I've been very encouraged by some of the phone calls and conversations that I've had with people who've been reaching out to their neighbors, friends, some who are even watching the videos uh, that are friends, and we thank you for that, and uh, just trying to be a blessing to others in a time when a lot of our world is kind of discouraged and depressed, and uh, we need that knowledge and, and we need that help. So these two verses are very good, but that's not going to be our focus for the next three weeks. Our focus is going to be in verse number 11. Paul says, I want you to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering and joyfulness. And that's going to be my wish for you during these days of shelter in home place. I want you to be strengthened with the power of God in three specific areas, in patience, in longsuffering, and joyfulness. And we're going to focus on the first one of those today, on patience. Uh, Henry Ward Beecher said, there's no such thing as preaching patience into people unless the sermon is so long they have to practice what they hear. And uh, don't worry, I know that you can pause if you want to, and, uh, but we want you to uh, realize how important this subject is. When you first think about that, some of you may say, well, isn't patience and long suffering the same thing? But they're not. And uh, patience is more of a cheerful endurance. And that's what we're kind of wanting to do during this shelter in home place. And then long suffering is long wrath and slow to anger. And that happens when your patience begins to run out and the anger begins to build. And we're going to talk more about that next week. And but both of these things are important. And we want to finish on Mother's Day and uh, give a message of joyfulness for our moms. And uh, there was a man's car that stalled in an intersection. You might have heard the story before, but it was a real busy intersection. He couldn't get his car going, and people are getting impatient. And the car behind him is just laying on the horn and honking and honking. He's trying to get it started. He can't get it started. And finally opens his car door. He goes back to the guy behind him, and he says, Listen, I can't get my car started. If you'll go up there and try, I'll stay here and lay on the horn for you. And uh, I know that that's kind of the way sometimes we feel. We want other people to be patient with us. We're not always as willing to be patient with others. And so right here in the message, you can insert any illustration you want from your time of lockdown with your spouse and your kids, because I'm sure that there are several. And, uh, you know, we're often kind of like the, the man in the parable of uh, forgiving debts in Matthew chapter 18, verse 26 through 29. 
he went before his master and he had this huge debt that no one could pay and the master forgave him and then he went out and all these people had these smaller debts and he wasn't willing to forgive them and and so we think well do we want the lord to be patient with us and forgive our debts absolutely sure we do but are you willing to be patient with others and forgive their debts maybe not always now i know that some of you might be thinking uh, because it happens every single time i speak on patience preacher i don't want anything to do with patience because the only way that i can get it is through tribulation and but please don't tune me out please don't mute me and hear me out concerning why this is so important uh, as if having to share a, a house 24 hours a day, seven days a week with your spouse isn't enough to want more patience, right? I know my wife needs more patience with me. So what, what I want to start with, just to show you the importance of this, is five reasons we ought to pursue patience. And the first reason is that it strengthens us. Now, um, all of these verses I put on you version, and you can look them up later. And I know sometimes when we're at church, you use your camera and you take a picture of the screen. If you want to do that, you can. I didn't put out every one of these verses. Uh, you might be able to turn in your Bible uh, to see them as we go along. And, uh, but this first one, I just thought we'd get it out of the way. Because this, in Romans 5, 3, and 4, this is the verse we don't like. And this is the prayer that we don't want to pray. Romans 5, 3, and 4. And not only, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and so i i imagine this is how it all started there was a young believer new to the christian faith and he went to a wise old believer and said you know i i really need to learn some patience and i haven't been patient with in my work and i haven't been patient with my family and i was wondering if you would just pray with me today for patience and the wise old believer said, sure, I'll pray for you for patience. And he began to pray, and they prayed together. And he said, Lord, send this young man tribulation in the morning. Send him tribulation at noon. Send him tribulation at... And the man said, wait, wait, that's not what I'm praying for. I don't want tribulation. And the wise old man said, oh, grasshopper, tribulation worketh patience and ever since that moment everyone has said don't pray for patience never pray for patience because tribulation will come and uh and so ever since we thought oh i don't know that i want patience at all and um some people say oh you remember what job happened to job you remember what happened when he prayed and then the lord sent him all these tribulations uh, another verse I want you to consider, and I don't know if you're jumping ahead. I hope you are, turning to James 1, 3, and 4. It says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience, but let patience have her perfect work. Remember that. Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So if you turn there and you have that in your Bibles, I, I want you to just keep looking at it for a few moments. And so my question is, how's all this working out for you? If you're the guy that says, no, I'm never going to pray for patience, how patient are you? And, uh, and so also, if you, you never pray for patience, is it working out for you that you don't ever have tribulation? And so if you're living a life free from any kind of tribulation, and that's what you're thinking right now, I probably need to change my message to honesty at this point. And uh, tribulation, sorrow, pain, trials, uh, they're all going to come. And, and as long as we're a part of this old sin-cursed earth, it's a reality, right? So that being true, wouldn't it be wise to learn something about how to endure it patiently, even cheerfully when they come, and that just kind of makes sense. And so the tough times are, go are going to come so at, at least let's learn how to gain the most benefit from those hard times. Uh, if it's going to come anyway, let it work. Let it work in you. Let patience have her perfect work that we might be strengthened, that we might be perfected, and that we would have all that we need to make it through. And uh, those who learn patience are strengthened through the storm. Those who don't are broken. Uh, the next couple of verses, 2 Thessalonians 1, and I'm just going to give you verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. 
Hebrews 6, 12. That you be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. So the first reason that we should let patience have its perfect work in us is because it strengthens us when those tribulations come. The second thing is patience is commanded. And uh, there's several verses here. And again, I'm just going to read them to you. You can maybe write them down right now. And, uh, but I'm just going to go right through these. 1 Timothy 6.11 But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. And so it's a command that we're to follow after these things. Uh, on, on 2 Peter 1, also add verse number 6. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. We're going to add each one of these things to our faith, and patience is one of those things. It's commanded. Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Titus 2, 2, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity in patience. And so patience is commanded. It's something that God wants us to develop. It's something that God wants us to have in our life. The third reason we should pursue patience is because it's exemplified. Uh, it's exemplified in three different areas. Uh, the first area that it's exemplified, and you don't see this on the PowerPoint, but you can put it in your notes, is it's exemplified by the Old Testament saints. And in James chapter 5, verse 10 and 11 is the verse for that. Take my brethren, the prophets, who spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of, of suffering and of affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And so we look at them and we see that God was able to see them through, that they patiently endured those trials. And if we do the same thing, happiness will be the result in our life. Then we look, look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. And uh, this is the second area of this that it's exemplified. Not only is it exemplified in the Old Testament saints, it was exemplified in the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 3, 10 and 11. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. Paul said, you've seen that in me. Uh, persecutions, yeah, he had those afflictions. They came unto me at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And so Paul was patient through all of those trials. And then the greatest example is Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, in verse 2 it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we also see patience exemplified in saints in the book of Revelation, and we see that in the end we win. Fourth reason we should look for patience is it encourages hope. And again, I know I've, I've given you a lot of verses today, and we're not going through and just looking at these one by one together. I'm just handing them to you. You can write them down. But uh, a lot of verses here. I'm going to read just the first two. Romans 8, 25. But if we have hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Romans 15, 4 and 5. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ. And again, all of these verses deal with, uh, it encourages hope. And that, that is a beautiful thing. If you're taking note, just, just don't stop it. It encourages. It does. But put the word hope. Uh, right now, we need hope. We need hope for what lies ahead. And only in God and only in Christ do we find the patience that gives us a, a belief and a reason to hope for the future. The fifth thing, it produces fruit. And Luke 8, 15 says, But that on the good ground are they which are in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And they bring forth fruit with patience. James 5, 7, and 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman, waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, and to receive the early and latter rain. Be also patient, establish your hearts, 
for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. And it's something that we're looking forward to in the future, and it helps us to produce fruit while we're waiting. And, you know, sometimes the production of fruit takes a while, and it requires patience. I was reading an unusual story about a man who bought a tree, and uh, he really didn't know what kind of tree he was buying, but he brought the tree home. It's in the wintertime. He plants the tree. He's looking forward to what's going to happen on the tree. In the spring, it, it just buds with all these beautiful pink buds that we've seen on some of our trees. It wasn't that type of tree, but it uh, wasn't long before the spring winds came, blew all the little flowers off the tree, and they scattered all over his yard. And he thought, what a mess. What good is this tree? And then it began to bloom through the summer, and he thought, well, maybe it'll produce a little shade for me. And, and as fall came, he saw that it had some, some green fruit size, like large, some green fruit, but it was like large nut size. And he thought, well, I wonder what that is. And he took one down, he took a bite out of it, and it was hard and nasty and bitter. And he thought, man, this tree is terrible. I should probably just cut this tree down. And, but he waited a little while, and then by late fall, that fruit became the crisp red apples, and he was able to enjoy finally the fruit of the tree. And uh, you know there's some Christians that have those early blossoms, and uh, they bloom quickly, and oh, we think they're going to be that way forever, but the little storm comes along and blows off their flowers, and you wonder what happened to them. And some people, they've had some hard trials and difficult times, and they kind of become hard and bitter. And we look at them and we think they're never going to bear the fruit of joy that we want in their life. Uh, but finally, some of those best blooms produce fruit late. And uh, if, we be, if we're patient and if we continue to be patient, God is working in us and God will bless us and God will give us the fruit that we need in our life. And, and so we must wait. We must wait for God to work and we wait for God to move. So that's, that's five reasons that I give you on why you should pursue patience. And hopefully you understand the need of patience in your life and in your home and in your family right now. And uh, in all honesty, that was kind of the introduction. Now I'm getting to the message. So that probably kind of worries you a little bit. Now, all I want to do is give you three thoughts on how and uh, we ought to pursue patience. How are we going to put patience into our life? And how can we get more patience now with our, with our spouse, with our kids, with our neighbors, with our work, with the country, with our government? And uh, you know what? We're not born with it. And we really have to learn it. And we have to practice to learn it. Uh, it's not always easy to acquire and, and learn. Some of you pray for patience like this. Lord, give me patience and I want it right now. And uh, that's the American prayer. Uh, wouldn't you rather do anything than wait? Uh, I, honestly, I hate waiting. Uh, I don't want to wait at a doctor's office. If they're going to see me, I think they should consider that my time is invaluable and let me write in. And uh, I don't want to sit in the waiting room. I don't want to wait on our government to make a decision on when my lockdown's over. And I don't want to wait to find out what's going to happen. And there's a lot of things. I don't want to wait for things to return to normal, but we can't always help that because sometimes waiting is the rule rather than the exception in, in life. And I, I read this about waiting, and you may not like it, especially if you have a hard time waiting and you're not very patient. It, but it says this, you can wait faster if you're patient than you can than you can if you're irritable. <laughs> so just think about that. The more irritable we become, sometimes maybe the harder it is to wait through the trials. And so waiting on God is resting instead of worrying. And the Psalms are filled with verses on waiting on God. And don't worry, we're not going to read every one of them. But I would like you to take your Bible and go back with me to Psalms chapter 62. I know I've given you a lot of other verses, but this one I want you to turn to, and I want you to follow along with us. And uh, this is not going to be a lengthy teaching on patience. I'm going to give you the outline. I'm going to give you the things we need to hear. What we really need to do is practice it. All right? So number one, wait on God. This very first part of Psalm 62 and verse number one says, truly my soul waiteth upon God. We're, we're in a waiting period. We're in a holding period. But it's good for us to know who we're waiting on. I don't know what it is that God wants us to learn from this crisis completely or what he wants our world to learn or our nation to learn. I do believe that God wants the world to turn to him. 
And is this what it's going to take for our world to do that? I'm not for sure. But hopefully for you that are you're willing to watch this video to this point, you recognize the importance of turning to God and trusting in God during this time. So, so who you are waiting on to come through for you is very important. Don't run ahead of God. Wait. In, in verse 1 is David's declaration. My soul waiteth on the Lord. I, I think verse 5 is kind of interesting because he says, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. But if you look at that verse, David's talking to himself. He said, My soul, hey, me, wait thou upon God. Do you ever have to do that? You have to say, oh, Tracy, wait on God to direct your steps. You want to jump out ahead. You want to go do this. You don't want to be patient. Wait on God. So the first thing is very simple. Wait on God. We know who we're waiting on. The second thing is we want to kind of build on that a little bit. Is we want to wait with trust. And if you're taking notes and or mental notes, I would have you add to the end of that sentence, Believing God will meet your needs. Waiting with trust. That's a part of what that means. If I'm waiting, trusting God, that means I trust. I believe that God will meet my needs. Look at verse, uh, the second part of verse number one. From him comes my salvation. So during this time when I'm looking for deliverance, I'm trusting, I'm waiting, I'm resting, putting my faith in God. Verse number eight is going to say, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And so I look at that verse in verse number eight, and I say, man, I've seen that over and over and over again. I've told you that we've been reading through the Psalms as a family, and I, I keep seeing that re repeated in the repetition of trust in him, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. And I saw it so many times. There was a point one morning I prayed, Lord, why do I keep seeing this? Trust in the Why did David have to say this so often? Kind of hit me like a ton of, ton of bricks. It's because I need it so often. We're so apt to trust in our own strength, in our own power, in our own mind, in our own conniving, in our own way. And over and over again, God's saying, trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. Believe that I'm going to be there for you. Believe that I'm going to meet your needs and I'm going to see you through. So we're going, to, we're going to wait on God. And while we're waiting, we're going to trust in him, believing that he is able to meet our needs. The third thing is this. Wait in stability and confidence. Uh, verse number two says, He only is my rock, that's my stability, and my salvation. He is my defense, that's my confidence. I shall not be greatly moved. And so where does our stability and confidence come from? It comes from knowing, and we see in this psalm and many others, it comes from knowing that God is our salvation, our security, and our hope. In verse number five, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. That's saying I'm hoping in God. That's I'm looking to him. He's also our glory in verse number seven, and God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. So he's our glory, he's our refuge. Why should I wait on God? Well, because without him, I don't have salvation. Without him, I don't have strength. Without God, I don't have deliverance. Without God, I'm, I'm absolutely helpless. And so we grow and we learn not necessarily when things come our way instantly, but when we are forced to wait. That's when God tempers us and seasons us, making us mellow and mature. And I want that to happen during this period of shelter at home, during this period of waiting. Lord, I want to be better after than I was before. I want you to use this period of testing to temper me and, and help me. And season me. Help me to do what I need to do in my personal life and in my heart. There's another Dutch proverb. And uh, it says, a handful of patience is worth more than a bushel of brains. And uh, so we certainly need that patience in these, these, this day and in this age. Uh, I read an illust uh, interesting illustration. <clears throat> you know what the annual cost of running red lights is? United States of America, this is from the U.S. Department of Transportation. 
the annual cost of running a red light. Medical bills, car repairs, not sure if it includes the ticket part or not, but that would be a good part of it. Annual cost, $7 billion. You know what the average amount of time saved running a red light is? 50 seconds. Now, some of you might even think, oh, it's more like two minutes that I have to set at that red light. But you know, how often have you seen someone run a red light and then you catch up to them at the next, at the next light and it, it balances out? The average amount of time for running that red light is about 50 seconds. I wonder how much it costs us when we try to run ahead of God. I mean, it might be we are bringing more tribulation by not learning patience than if, than if we just cheerfully learned to endure while we were waiting on the Lord. And, and so let the Lord perform during this time his perfect work in you. I mean, hey, look at us. It's going to take some time. I love that little saying, please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. It's true with all of us. And so during this time of waiting, let's pray that God will give us the patience that he might work his perfect work in us, that when it's over, we'll be better than we ever were before. Really appreciate you joining us today. I love you all, and I long to see you. Doesn't seem right, but I can't wait. Have a great day.